Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to The Toast. Happy Tuesday. Hope everyone's having a great day thus far. Welcome back to The Toast. Hey, Jax, how you doing? I'm doing good since we've been welcome back to now twice. Yeah, and it was important to welcome people to du- know, and, be, and to be a welcoming person. To double the welcome, double the fun. You just said a mouthful there, sister. <laughs> Anyways, I feel sufficiently welcomed back to the toast. Good, good. I'm glad that this is a welcoming environment for everyone today. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that, Turdy. It's a pleasure. <laughs> um, before we dive in, let's talk really quickly. Just send some love to our Nashville toasters. Yesterday was such a terrible day. Um, I know everyone all over Nashville is just heartbroken. And so we just wanted to take a moment and acknowledge what happened at you know that school with those beautiful kids who are just it's just a it's a horrible it's it was a terrible day yeah I have so many words it's not the forum for all of them but I just am heartbroken and this morning choosing stories it's like it's what's the point yeah what's the point um there's also like more news like coming out there's mm-hmm. footage now of oh no the girl breaking in and um yeah. roaming the halls and everything and it's just horrible and I know we have a lot of toasters like from that area and just Nashville in general so we just wanted to send love today we're gonna you know do our best what we always do which is just to bring love and light and moronic you know mindless news just to get your mind off of things for a while yeah that's what we do and we shall do such a thing we will days like today it's certainly hard yeah but we'll give it our best shot yeah so tell me what's going on with you how are you Jax how's rolled he's good I am good not much is new I know I was really busy yesterday um so I know you were probably looking for me um but I like wasn't by my phone I just could feel like Turdy was needing me Jackie was like with a friend for an hour and she called me. She's like, yeah, I was, I was like out of commission. I'm like, I didn't even call you. Like what? I didn't even know you were gone. I know, but I just felt like I wasn't there for you in that hour. Cause I wasn't, but you weren't, I wasn't good thing. I wasn't needed by you, but, um, I just, I had to let you know, like I'm here now. I just, and I do want to let you know, like you had a friend over and we were fine. We'll be Okay. We'll be okay. I know you're probably just feeling like a little, you know, maybe left out because Olivia's in town. Olivia's in New York. We had dinner yesterday. Like, you know, everyone was together and like you weren't. So I understand you like this is like a cry for help, essentially. Well, yes, you could see it that way. But you could also see it the way of like the party that I was at last night, which was the kids party. Like you were at the adult section. Yeah. I was at the kids party. And I don't know which one. I don't know which one either. So I think we all had a good fun night. I think we all had a good fun night too. You know, today's a big day. I have my second physical therapy appointment. I will try to keep my pants on this time. Good luck. I know, like, you know what? I feel more confident going in knowing I've been through it once and I know exactly what garments need to be taken off. Yeah. And I tried to dress like in, you know, like now I'll just wear like leggings and a bra. Like I, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. Maybe even a sports bra. No, he has to unclip my bra, which really was like a very, like, you know, personal. I was like, oh, I can unclip it. He's like, no, I got it. Like, he does this every day. But I was like, wow, this man is taking my bra off. Whoa. You didn't tell us about that. There's so many elements of physical therapy that are so deeply personal. Physical therapy, more personal than comedy, more personal than food. I'm sorry. You said a mouthful there, sister. That's really crazy that he unclasps your bra. Well, because he was like, lay on your... And what, he didn't want me walking around without a bra. I actually appreciated that. Because we were doing like exercises and stuff. Imagine I have to do exercises without a bra. Yeah. But then there was a portion where I had to put this like thing on my back. And so I laid on my stomach and he was like, he just unhooked my bra. Like, it wasn't weird. Like, I'm telling you. It's much too much. The intricacies of physical therapy. I know, but I really do feel like slowly I'm making strides. I did my exercises last night. I'm just really looking forward to putting this behind me. I'm looking forward to that too, Turdy. We want, you know, a happy, healthy, healthy, fit Turdy. That's really all I want too. So I'm, I'm doing everything I can to nip this problem in the bud. Well, I have to commend you on you taking action. Thank you. And I'm being, I'm really trying to be like a good student. Yeah, I love that for you. I have done my exercises every day since 
the last session, which was only on Friday, but still. He's going to be so impressed with your, I know. with your commitment. With my progress. Yeah. Are you doing I, it for that reason, to impress? No, I'm doing it because my back fucking hurts. And it's like, what's the point of going to physical therapy every single week if I'm not going to like actually do it? That's just like a waste of everyone's time and money. Doing it to you impress? Know? No, I'm really like I'm gonna I'm gonna have the strongest back this side of the East River. You're never gonna see a back so strong when I'm done. Can't wait. I can't wait too. How's Belly? Belly is good. Period. Belly is good. Period. Yeah, all's good. 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 good quiet. Good. Quiet here. I finished a book. I just started the Redheads book. Wait, really quickly. Back to Belly. Mm. What fruit is Belly today? I'd rather not say. Really? Yeah. It's private. Okay. <laughs> Are you being serious? You're going to tell us. I can't no, tell. I'm not going to tell you. Oh, my God. Not her gatekeeping the fruit. Yeah, I'm gatekeeping the fruit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Girl boss, gatekeep, repeat. I love that for me. Yeah. That's me. Period. Are you a gatekeeper of like, if you find something fabulous, mm-hmm. are you going to share it with like, you know, people or are you going to gatekeep it? People like being like my followers and such and the listeners. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you found, like, a secret hack to life, like, you're going to keep it for yourself or you're going to share? Oh, I'm going to share. That's, like, kind of what we do here. We just, like, find... Well, then find... you're not a gatekeeper. No, I guess I'm not. Your heart is too big. Oh, that's so beautiful. It is. You're, like, you're like the lion. In the you, Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. Yeah. yeah. His heart was too big. Is that, is that what, what it was? is? He's a coward. What's the lion with he the heart? And then there's one who doesn't have a brain. Jackie, there's someone whose heart was too big. I don't think that's in The Wizard What's of Oz. That? No, okay, maybe not. But like, there's like a kid's movie where it's like his heart grows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I do. And I feel like Is it the lion. Grinch? Like his heart <gasps> grew by the end? It's the Grinch. Very similar. Very similar. But better. But better. The Grinch is so good. And I hope they never remake it. They just you know? did, but yeah. They did they a did? cartoon version. No, and I then they like did the Matthew action. Morrison version. No, those don't count. I mean, like, because, like, you know, movies like that get remade every, you know, Beauty and the Beast gets, they always get, like, a facelift. But there will never be a better Grinch than Jim Carrey, and they should just leave it at that. I agree. I think they will for a while. At least, you know, for the next decade. Yeah. Who do you think is, like, the next Grinch? You think he's born yet? I think it's... Who's like a crazy comedian who does like crazy voices, but who's young? Who's young? Crazy actor. Right actor. Yeah. Doesn't exist yet. It's honestly like Joaquin Phoenix. No, he probably was up for the role with Jim Carrey. Yeah, because they're like similar ages and they have like similar crazy faces. Remember when Jim Carrey was dating Ariana Grande? Never forget. You know- I think about that more often than I should. It was never like fully confirmed that they were dating, but they were like being weird and hanging out. And like, that was weird. That was enough for me. I believed it. I either believe or I disbelieve. Like you give me two people and I'll either believe that they're together or not. I'm, I'm not off, I'm not usually right about what I believe. Yeah. About celebrity relationships. Like I think it's business when it's romantic. I think it's romantic when it's, when it's business. Right. And that's just the vibe I got. Dating. So you're a, so you're a doubter. Non-believer Once were her dreamers Only when it comes to Selena Yeah, yeah, yeah Right now um, I don't know why It's just giving just not believing it I'm just not believing some of these things That are coming out about like The romantic endeavors of Selena As in Zane and Drew Tagger Yes Is what you're referring to That's yeah. what I'm referring to I'm just eating it all up, you know, living in fairyland. Yeah, that's also fun. And sometimes you just have to jump right in and then you never know. You get a couple like Avril and Tyga. I know. It's just like in this age of information we're living in, we are constantly bombarded. There are so many stories we talk about here that were never true, that we never get like follow ups on. It's just like it's nonstop with like anonymous gossip and like, you know, people everywhere having a cell phone, taking pictures like we are but constantly bombarded with information that like never turns out to be true. But like we spend so much time and brain power like talking about, you know, the possibility of it being true. Yeah. And so many things like that we were never meant to know. Like I feel like now if celebrities go on one date, like we'll hear about it. Whereas Emrod and Harry. Yeah. But back in the day you wouldn't have. And then, you know, 20 years later that person goes on Watch What Happens Live and they're like, oh yeah, I went on a date with so-and-so oh one time. 
You're so, it's always on Watch It Happens Live. You're so right. And it's just a fun fact, but you didn't get invested in it because now it's just in the past. But now we get invested in all of these small things. So and so were spotted at dinner. And it's like, what does it mean? Like the weekend in Angelina Jolie. So true. What does it mean? It meant nothing. Did it? Nothing ever came of it. I know. And she was just like spotted on a three hour lunch date with a billionaire. Yeah, I saw that too. But I don't know. Lunch date? It's not giving romance. It's not sexy. No. But Nobu Malibu, where they had lunch, is a very sexy venue. But Nobu Malibu is so business and so pleasure. It could go either way. But like where where Angelina and The Weeknd had dinner is actually a romantic spot. Yeah, where is it, Giorgio Baldi? Yeah, and you know, yeah. when I went to Giorgio Baldi, you know who I saw having dinner together? By the way, I didn't know you've been to Giorgio Baldi. I have. You wouldn't expect that from me. I've actually been there a couple times. What? Yeah, like every time I go to LA with Zach, we go. Look at you. I know, I'm really famous and fancy. Literally. <laughs> but you know Literally. who I saw who was there dining, whining and dining, being romantic as hell? Give me a clue. Uh, they're no longer together. They were together for much longer than people expected. Young Hollywood. We came to ship towards the end. They love to walk their dog. Sean Mendes and Camila Cabello. Ding, ding, ding. That last clue gave it to me. Yeah. I saw them, like, and they were extremely into each In other. Love. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that relationship. At first, I didn't. Yeah. No. And it may, I think I already believed it by the time I saw them together. But it was like, if I hadn't believed, I would have been a believer. You know, this is actually a good time to bring up a story I actually meant to t- tell you about for a story today, but it's fine because I'm bringing it up now. Okay. Did you see that Nick Vile had Rachel Bilson on his podcast and they both admitted to like pretending to be in a relationship because they wanted attention? Yes. I was like really shook by that. Yeah, but I was really grateful for the insight. Um, it definitely made me look at Rachel Bilson differently because, you know, Nick Vile is a reality star. He's an influencer, podcaster. Like, these are things people at, at that level, ourselves included, you know, have to Gimmicks do Gimmicks we attention. must rely on. It's the game we play. Like, I don't think that Nick Vile is necessarily above doing things like that, and I, I don't think he would disagree. But Rachel Bilson, like, should be. Yeah, well, they were, like, going to do a podcast together. Right. And then they wanted buzz for their podcast together, so they said that they were dating or, like, allowed yeah. people to say that they were dating. It was just, it was bizarre for Rachel Bilson to admit that. Yeah. It's bizarre for her to do it. It's actually cool for her to admit it. Yes, I I like that. Yeah. Especially now that she's a podcaster. So like, honesty is your currency. Yeah. It's just, for me, what I think about, um, like people that she came up with, people that she's dated, like Adam Brody, Leighton Meester, for say, like they're all really on the same level. Like they would never do that, you know? Yeah, but why not? Why can't she branch out? It's just, I, I, I Why do you have to put her in a box? I'm putting her on a pedestal, not on a, in a box. I, like, I just, I think highly of her. You're putting her on a box on a really, like, high shelf. Or on a pedestal, <laughs> like I said. <laughs> yeah. No, I think highly of her, too. But I think her brand is changing. She's, you know, more of a personality now. And, like, these are just fun things that you share. And, and trust, I'm sure those A-listers that you've referenced have, have, done. have done something similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just not man enough to admit it. No, no. Because then it's like people are going to doubt everything you do, you know? Yeah, but not if you're honest about it once. Mm. I don't know. We'd have to see how hard they went in trying to convince us. Like, I feel like it was a few Instagram comments and probably some well-placed sources, but not like them kissing on it, like actually lying. that's insane. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Just they messed with us. We were messed with, Turdy Lou. We were messed with. We got messed. And, but that's actually great. What we were just saying, we see so many of these like items, these couples, these rumors to be dating and they never go anywhere. And it's like, at least we buttoned that one up. Yeah, but we got played for a fool. What about January Jones though? Oh yeah, what about January Jones, Nick Vile, question mark? I feel like we've asked him about it. Did we? Yeah, like either when we were on his show or vice versa or offline. Like I feel like... We definitely brought that up. What did he say? I don't remember. Must have not been like that juicy because we would have remembered something like crazy. Yeah, I think the what I'm remembering and I might be it's just the vibe was like he was just as shocked as we were. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. OK. Nick Vile is like so, you know, ladies love him. Well, he's a taken man now. Yeah, that's true. He's engaged. He's, oh, you know, the Bachelor finale was on last night. No. Who won? 
I have no idea, but like, isn't that crazy that it was on? Yeah, that is crazy. In all my story ser- searching this morning, I didn't even see anything. You're lying. I saw uh, what kind of chapstick Zach Shalcross wears to keep his lips kissable. These publishers <laughs> are getting so out of control with their, and you know they make like affiliate money when they like link to the chapstick.com. Yeah. It's so pathetic. It really is. Like that's journalism. Yeah. I can't. I won't. You're not I curious won't. what it what it was? Actually, what was it? I think it was Burt's Bees. The worst chapstick on the planet. I know. It doesn't move. It's it's like putting cement on your lips. Yeah, it's just like plastic to rub around. What do you think is the best chapstick? Obviously, Aquaphor. Aquaphor, for me, I, I just switched to something like that's a little cleaner than Aquaphor. Wow. It's called Waxaline. Mm. And I just keep a tub by my bed, and it's, it's good. But I mean like traditional chapstick, like in a tube. Lip balm. I like Blistex chapstick. Blistex is good because it's medicinal. Yeah, but it's a little too small. I was constantly going through the packets. Carmex, she's good. Carmex is intense. No, she'll Every, light the nostril no, hairs on and fire. And it's like everything you eat tastes like Carmex. Everything you yeah. drink tastes like Carmex. It's like, it's like contagious. Yeah. The, the smell. Yeah. Eos, some of the worst. Some of the worst. Rosebud and Salve, Chef's Kiss. Rosebud Salve is delicious. But I want to know who is in charge of like distribution and marketing for Eos. Because they managed to get like one of the worst products of all time into every Into the store. hands of millions. Uh, every, literally every store, no matter what you go to, like if they don't sell like cosmetics, you're like, do you guys have chapstick? They carry an EOS, like literally at a cigar store. Like it is crazy. It's so true that they have great marketing. I also remember they had good PR. They were in Miley's music video for yes. We Can't Stop. They were everywhere. And they also had like the little balls and everyone was like, oh, a ball. Like it's horrible chapstick. Like when some, if I'm ever with people and they're like, I'm like, does someone have chapstick? And they have EOS. I'm like, does someone have chapstick? Somebody has EOS? Yeah, I feel like that's something I've experienced a lot. Like, people offering me EOS. And it's like, first of all, that's disgusting. It's a very personal thing, your EOS. Yeah, it is. It's it not is. shareable. Yeah, no, it's not. And of all the chapsticks in the world, why is that the one that you have chosen? Because they sell it at every store. They probably had no choice but to buy the EOS. No, but they also sell usually, like, a couple sticks. Yeah, like, by the register. They always have the chapstick brand, which are pretty good. I love a stick. I really do. Yeah. Um, Nivea is, is not great. Isn't it just moisturizer? Yeah. No, they make a chapstick and it's like, it's like looks good and it feels good when you put it on. And then 30 seconds later, you're like, have I died and gone to the desert? Like, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of that. It's really hard. But, you know, those kind of beauty brands who make like elevated lip balms, those are pretty good. Like Summer Fridays is really good. Yep. Covey just came out with a lip oil. I think, yeah, the Covey one is very good. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, Glossier makes like a decent one. Mm-hmm. There's a few. Interessant. I could literally write a dissertation on chapstick. Like I feel like I'm. What's your favorite seeking- one? You ne- you're gatekeeping yours. Aquaphor. Okay. So then, is there a need for these other ones? No, no. But you never know. You're in a bind. You have to run into a pharmacy, and they don't have Aquaphor. Well, they have Aquaphor everywhere. But you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. But in a desperate situation, I'll take what I can get. Even Burt's Bees. Right, that's how we came to this topic yeah, of conversation. Yeah, the Bachelor. Yeah. So yeah. The Bachelor was on last night. I hope for those of you watched that you got the outcome that you so desired. Yeah. And that they live happily together forever. Forever and ever. Who's the last couple that's like, the most recent couple that's still together? Rachel and Brian? No. Ari and Lauren. They are way before Rachel and... No, they're not. They're not? No. I don't think. Are you sure? I don't know. Let me look it up. Hang on. No, I'm pretty sure it went from Nick to Rachel. Remember, they wanted Peter Krause, but instead we got Ari and Lauren. I'm right. I already did the math. Okay. Because I couldn't find what I was looking for anyway. And then after Ari, Obeka's not together... Yeah. After Becca, we had Colton's not together. Right. After Colton, we had Taisha and Claire. No. Hannah. 
Hannah, Hannah Brown. Brown not together. Not together. Oh, Peter. But Peter's like kind of with Kelly Flanagan. Yeah, they're together, but they weren't even close to right. together from the she show. She came in fourth. But I guess that's what we could say. Peter and Kelly. Yeah. Tentatively because of the caveat that she didn't win. But she was on the show. But so like it counts. That's how they met. Actually, no, they met right. at that, you know, the Westlake Four Seasons or whatever. You're right. <laughs> Uh, like that was for me and my relationship with the franchise that Peter uh, what's his last name pilot was my last straw like that was my nail in the coffin that was my 13th reason like that the way I felt so as a you like as a viewer so used <laughs> like I can't explain how my time was so wasted on this like one of the probably one of the worst bachelors in history and i love kelly flanagan this is nothing against her yeah but he had good girls it's all about the crop he had amazing of, girls hannah ann maddie prue kelsey victoria fuller, victoria fuller. aka laturdia yeah laturdia 2.0 yeah he did have good girls and then from there we had claire and Tasha. Tasha. and then and matt matt watching. and rachel matt and rachel <gasps> matt and rachel yeah matt and rachel yeah, but they like broke up. Like, I know, but she's uh, still like, the winner. Like, yeah, 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 she's the winner. No, you're right, you're right. You're so right. that is the most recent couple. Uh, we could keep that going, like, but we don't know who won. So crazy how like they got back together after that, you know? Yeah, but they're so in love. They've been together for yeah. so long and they're not even engaged. Like they're just being like normal and dating and living life and seems like they yeah. enjoy their life together. Are they engaged? No. That's crazy now. Because they didn't get engaged on the show. They didn't get engaged on the show. Did she? Did he propose before, after the final rose? That's such a great question. Let me Google it. I do not believe that they are engaged. I don't. They're definitely not engaged right now. But did they get engaged? Call off their engagement and then get back together as a couple. I think so. That's like wild. This is like a whole explainer. Like, I wish Googles would sometimes just be like, yes or no. Yeah, yes or no. <laughs> are, they, are you texting? Are you still texting bitches? Yes or no. Also, did you see Black China's new face? I did. She looks really good. I literally can't discern from all of this text if they're engaged, if they were ever engaged or not. I believe that they did get engaged. I believe that they didn't for some reason. Oh. That just like they chose each other. But yes, they saw that Black China is dissolving her fillers. She looks beautiful. Yeah, she was changing her look. I think she got some tattoos removed. She is off of OnlyFans. She has, I think, like dedicated her body and soul to Christ. She got baptized. Christ looks good Seems on like her. Christ looks good on her. She is on a path of virtu virtuousness. This is good Virtuity. for this is good for everyone. Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's a good path for her. Yeah, and she looks beautiful. Yeah, she does. She has a beautiful face. She's a beautiful girl. She is. I like. I forgot. Yeah, because there's a lot of distractions. Right. Right. So. Well, I feel like we should dive in because we already spoke of like four stories about, you know. <laughs> four stories that I didn't choose. The Bachelor, Nick Vile, Black China. So here are the fast five stories that I did choose for today. And today's episode is brought to you by Caraway. Get a head start on spring cleaning with Caraway. Their thoughtfully designed sets and complimentary storage makes staying and getting organized easier than ever. You can now save 10% off the full speed of Caraway products from their internet famous cookware to their newly launched food storage set. Caraway's high quality ceramic coated kitchenware is free of PTFE like Teflon. It's free of lead, cadmium, and other toxic chemicals. Caraway's kitchenware comes in a variety of chic shades and all sets include complimentary easy access storage solutions. Their uh, naturally slick surface means minimal oil or butter for slide off the pan eggs and easy cleaning. I'd like to share an anecdote about, you know, Caraway yesterday, um, just helping my marriage. Because Ben went into the kitchen and he's like, I'm gonna make a sandwich. I'm like, okay. He's taking a long time and I wanted to get Theo a treat. So I like go in. I'm like, what is going on? And there's like dishes. I'm like, why is there a pan? You made a sandwich. And he's like, oh, I wanted to toast the bread. I'm like, so use the toaster. 
No, he used the pan. And honestly, it was caraway and it really was so easy to clean. Like I didn't have to throw it in the dishwasher because it was just a piece of bread. So you know what? All was forgiven because he used the caraway pan. Yes. And you actually shouldn't throw it in the dishwasher anyway. So that's best for you. Yeah. Um, so again, it's non-toxic, easy cooking, and it's super well loved. Over 40,000 people, including us, have raved about their caraway kitchen. Visit carawayhome.com slash toast10 to take advantage of this limited time offer of 10% off your next purchase. That deal is exclusive for our listeners. So visit carawayhome.com slash toast10 or use code toast10, T-O-A-S-T-1-0, at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. Today's episode is also brought to you by Starbucks Ready to Drink. Life moves fast. Starbucks Ready to Drink coffee delivers an uplifting boost that helps you tune into the moments that matter wherever you are. So it's Starbucks coffee, but it's conveniently packaged for life on the go. It includes uh, a variety of of beverages. They have a bottled frappuccino, which is like a chilled coffee drink for a pop of flavor. Um, They also have the bold, smooth taste of the nitro cold brew, which I love. The bottled frappuccino chilled coffee drink is inspired by the Starbucks cafe favorites, and it comes in four delicious flavors like mocha, vanilla, caramel, and coffee. You can enjoy every moment with Starbucks ready-to-drink coffee. We keep them here at the studio. We have a ton of the Starbucks ready-to-drink beverages. They're so good. Ben actually recorded in here last night and needed just like a boost, you know, a nice flavorful boost. And he was really impressed with the, not me making everything about Ben today. You're kind Um, of obsessed. But he was. He was impressed with our array of products to offer him here while he recorded his podcast um so if you uh want to shop the full lineup you can shop it online or in store it's wherever you buy groceries you'll be able to find starbucks coffee ready for right now shop the full lineup online or in store wherever you buy groceries and that's starbucks ready to drink coffee they are delivering an uplifting boost that helps you tune into the moments that matter wherever you are and it's so great like at your office by your desk wherever you are just you know churning out things throughout the day keep a starbucks beverage you know you never know when you need it so true turdy so true turdy are you ready for our first story yes taylor swift stole the show last night at the iheart radio music awards taylor took home top honors during iheart's big award show and while her acceptance speeches were touching it was her wardrobe that really drew eyes she looks beautiful she won Song of the Year and, and the Innovator Award Monday night, and in both instances, she delivered some powerful remarks about what it takes to stand out and succeed in the music biz, noting that the formula of a hit song isn't cut and dry. Of course, she was talking about her fan favorite track, Antihero, which won Song of the Year. She picked out certain lyrics like narcissism and altruism as examples that not everything has to be so catchy and cookie cutter, arguing that artists can be real with their art. She sparkled in a hooded number... Who made it? I don't know. She looks beautiful. Like, I love... So different for her. It was giving reputation. You know, everyone thinks it's like a clue. I just think she looked good. Like, I'm not going to read into it. Yeah, like, it does have a reputation vibe to it, but I almost think that was accidental because it is also kind of midnightsy. The color is... Yes, that's true. And maybe it's photographing differently than, like, how it was in person. No, I think just the fact that there's a hood makes it reputation because, you know, she's, like... Darkness. Yeah, but... The color, the sparkles, the hairstyle, like it's still in line with Midnight. So I think it was just like coincidental. You know, something that perplexes me about my queen is, you know, at the level that she's at, she is constantly showing up to like moronic fake award shows that like she's so much better than she's like always going to like billboard music awards american music awards and i know it's because those are like the fan voted events and she's really you know wants to show up for her fans but it's like beyonce would never go to the iheart radio awards you know it's like fraudulent yeah i think that there's a part of her brand where it's like we need a couple controlled events where we can you know Say what we need to say. Stop clues. Know that we're going to win. Yeah. And be in a friendly environment. Like I think obviously the Grammys is not that. You don't know if you're going to win. And there's so many other big stars. Like I think this is just an easy night out for Taylor where she's able to like do a red carpet, drop clues, talk to her fans. right? Yeah. It works out with her tour. Right. Uh, It's like an, uh, an easy, nice way for people to see her. Yeah, no, I just, like, I think, I always think it's weird when I see her at these events, and she's, like, really the only actual famous person there. Yeah, I think there's something about it that's probably really comforting. For sure. And productive for whatever she's putting forth. No, and I also think, you know, she, one of her goals is to be, like, one of the most decorated female artists of our time. And in order to be decorated, you have to show up to these things. But does this count as decoration? It does, it does. It counts as an award, like it does. Okay, is... 
Is there like a list of awards that count? Are there any awards that really don't count? No, that's such a good point. Because if there was, I would think it was this. Right. I don't know. I'm just always like when she went to like the Teen Choice Awards and like she gave this like big speech and it was like her night. Why is she always like slumming it at these events? I I really I would love it if anybody has any like theories like because I think it's because she wants to be highly decorated. And that's that's my theory. Like I would just is she so much better than this? I think it's I don't think it's about the decorations because I don't think that those really count towards anything meaningful especially when you're winning Grammys you're up for Oscars like I I don't think they're in the same category I really I think it's um, I think it's like PR I do and and it's a good PR it's always good like you know that you're gonna win it's flattering it's okay, low pressure. Maybe it's just because I look at everything with such a critical eye. But like, I don't really see like when I see clips of like they're like song of the year goes to and the only famous person in the room is Taylor Swift antihero and she's like, ah. like to me like I don't even think that's a good look honestly. No, I know, but you also have to remember like Taylor is still Taylor, you know, yeah, and you know. like at her core like she wants just like love and acceptance. And, I know, and to win these things and she can't help herself but be like, oh, like she there's she that's the only reaction that she knows it's like when when she goes to these events and we always say like award shows like this have one token like actually famous person and then they get all the awards it's like whoever shows up right um and so I feel that way with anyone this is not just Taylor yes it just it feels like they're playing a part it's like a the whole night is a charade yeah but the industry like that's what it takes in the industry like like I think she is so authentic with her fans and she really as much as she can is very like DTC but there is all this bullshit that you have to do sometimes radio and she like in order to get played on the radio this is iHeartRadio yeah yeah like it's just industry bullshit that and I feel like uh, when a lot of people get to that level they they stop playing the game like they're they don't have to do that anymore but like she doesn't and that's why to me it feels out of place yeah and they have a lot of like disdain for all of that because I think some of it is it's not fair and it's It's political and you know it's not always like the cream rising it's just people making choices true but I think this stuff is still important to her and so and she does she would never do something that like she is vehemently against But, like, getting played on the radio and all of that, like, you care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just, it always feels weird to me. Yeah. Anyway, she looked great, and she's really just, it's good, it's a good few weeks to be Taylor. No, she's in, like, a a really um, fantastic, for lack of a better word, era. It's true. Like, she's killing it. Are you ready for our next story? Yeah. Because this was an element of yesterday's story that we forgot to talk about, but more news is coming out. From page six saying that M. Rata is apparently oh. begging for Olivia Wilde's forgiveness after Harry Styles PDA. So a source tells page six that M. Rata is begging for Olivia Wilde's forgiveness after a video of the model making out with her ex Harry Styles went viral over the weekend. The Daily Mail published video of them making out in Tokyo. A source told page six that Olivia and Emily are friends and that Emily is now begging for her forgiveness. This is a betrayal, says the source. Just weeks ago... Olivia Wilde and M. Rada were photographed hanging out together at the 2023 Vanity Fair Oscars bash. Last June, Olivia and M. Rada were seated next to each other in the VIP section at Harry Styles' concert in Paris, where they were spotted palling around and dancing together. M. Rada also came to Olivia's defense when she faced criticism about uh, her promoting her movie, Don't Worry Darling. Shia, Shia, Shia. Saying that she felt protective of Wilde. So I do think, based on these things, there is an established friendship between these two. Yeah. And... That would mean Emrata making out with Harry is no bueno. There also was a rumor that we forgot to talk about yesterday from Dumois yes. that M that Olivia Wilde and Harry Styles, when they were together, had a threesome with Emrata, allegedly from Dumois. Then these photos of them dancing at his concert in Paris. Yeah. I guess that would have been the time and the place for a menage a trois. I don't know if I necessarily believe that. Um, but the, the whole other part of this where, you know, Olivia and Emrata are friends, which by the way, makes so much sense. Like they're literally the same. Like everything I always say, I feel like I said the same thing about Emrata that I said about Olivia Wilde, like that brand of like, you know, wearing a feminist t-shirt, like while also like hating women. Like I, like to me, they're the same. And so I, I actually can see them being really good friends. I feel like they probably have like really similar values and opinions on stuff. Um, 
And the other thing to follow up from yesterday is that Harry and Olivia, nope, Harry and Emrata were both at an event, I think for like Michael Kors or something. They were there for different reasons. Like He didn't fly her out. He didn't fly her out, but like they okay. were there at the same event. That's really helpful. So to me, if I'm looking at this on a, on a board, you know, like an investigator, here's what I think. I think Olivia and Emrata are friends. I think they had a threesome with Harry mm-hmm. when Olivia was together. I think it was a great time, was had by all. I think fast forward six months later, eight months later, they're broken up. Harry and Em run into each other at this event. And it's like they've oh, already been intimate. We had a good time, and always in a threesome, there's a weird thing that happens. Of course. And by the way, let's say they did have a threesome, Olivia Wilde, like, how dumb are you? You're going to bring the hot... And, like, Olivia Wilde is a beautiful woman. But you're going to bring the hottest young thing on the planet into the bedroom with your younger boyfriend? Like, are you uh, okay? Because that's a dumb thing to do. That's why I don't even believe it because I don't even think Olivia Wilde would be so stupid. No, I think that she would. I don't think she sees women as threatening. I think she wouldn't... Like, that's very... uh you know, non-feminist thing to say, like, don't bring the younger, hotter girl <coughs> around. I'm sorry. I, I'm a feminist. No, no, I kind know. Of. And not non-feminist, and but fast. it's just like, I could just see her being like. Yeah, love is, you know, for everyone. Yeah, and, and that like, you wouldn't exclude one woman just because of the way she looks and that, you know what I mean? But like. I know, but you know what? At the end of the day, like dating relationships, it's all a game and you have to do anything to like, keep your man, especially when your man is the hottest man on the planet. But that's not how she sees things because you see things differently. No, I see things in reality. And if no, she no, I agree with see me, things the way wrong. that you, I see things the way that you see things, sir. I'm just trying to like get into her mindset because I don't think she like thinks that way you gotta keep your man keep him away from other women because like that's just not the vibe she puts forth well you do you do (laughs) I mean that would be like me saying hey Giselle wanna fuck me and my husband like how dumb am I yeah like we get in there Ben's not looking at me Yeah, well, who knows what happened in the alleged threesome, but clearly it went well because... A little too well. Harry and M were happy to see each other in Tokyo. Right. So now, like, thinking if they had a threesome, them making out is just nothing. Yeah, it's like they've been there, done that. And I'm sure Olivia, if they do have a decent friendship, I'm sure Olivia's pissed at her, like, you were just making out with my ex, but she also has no one to blame but herself for bringing them together, if all of this is true. You invited her into the bedroom. Like, now you're mad they kissed in Tokyo? Like, when you asked for... thought of that. Yeah. Before you let them fuck. Yeah. But this definitely throws a wrench into Emrata and Harry, like, dating in the future. No, they're, it's not. They're not going to date. Like, because... Really, I, I'm telling Emra- you, we were never meant to know this. Olivia Wilde was never meant to yeah. find out that they smooched in Tokyo. They're on the other side of the world. They're young and single. Okay, so they kissed after they had a threesome. Right. That's nothing. We were not yeah. meant to know. This was disaster. Yeah, even, I, I actually think Emrata, like, really is, um, like, a girl's girl. Like, I think that she is. Okay. And I think that, like, even if Harry wanted to date, like, I think she's focused on getting back in the good graces of Olivia Wilde, honestly. I think she doesn't care about Harry enough to ruin her friendship with Olivia Wilde. But I think that if it were a guy that she was all in for... Mm -hmm. So long. So long, farewell, I'll be to say an adieu, adieu, adieu to you and you and you. You and you and you. That's how the kids say it in the movie. Austrian. Austrian campers. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? Yeah. Um, so yeah, these two are n- definitely not like, I do believe this is probably the last we'll see of them. And it was supposed to be, we were never supposed to see them. And like, what little sneaky, sneaky. phone? Who did that? No, not even, I'm sorry, not the phone. Like, thankful for the phone, whoever like was at that party and knew that we needed to see this. But the two of them sneaky. Because like, yeah. We, Imagine this happened like we never knew about it, but it's like just knowing the history we now. We're supposed to know. Like that's really a bad look for Emrata because I think she is a girl's girl and a girl's girl right. doesn't do that. No. Right. Yeah. No. Right. No. Are you ready for our next story? 
Yeah. Because it's some sad relationship news that I do feel relates to the show. Okay. But it doesn't, in, in the sense that it doesn't relate to the show. Oh, in that sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, uh, let me explain. Please. Backstreet Boys, AJ. It Ma- does. It does <laughs> relate to the show. <laughs> Backstreet Boys, AJ McLean and his wife, Rochelle, separate temporarily to build a stronger future. Now, I'm going to give you the information and then we'll talk about how let it may. Let me find my pertinent information. How it may or may not relate to the show. AJ McLean and his wife Rochelle are taking some time apart. The Backstreet Boys singer, who's 45, and his wife, who's 41, that might become important information later on, are separating after 11 years of marriage, but plan to reunite in the future, they claim. A statement was put forth, marriage is hard but worth it. We have mutually decided to separate temporarily to work on ourselves and our marriage with the hope of building a stronger future. The plan is to come back together and continue to nurture our love for one another and our family. We ask for respect and privacy at this time. Quote, separation is hard enough without the commentary. Oof, we're about to comment. Please be kind. Um, and Please be kind and remember there are children involved, Turdy Lou. Turdy Lou? Okay, bitch. Oh, sorry. There are children involved. End quote, Turdy Lou. Oh, n- now to you, Turdy Lou. No, 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 no. It was oh. it was definitely directed at you, but I didn't want you to think it was part of AJ's statement. Oh, and that is what my like okay. immediate so thought. So here's what I got tagged in this so many times yesterday because if you listen to the toast every day, you know that a few weeks ago someone wrote into Dear Toasters talking about how a former popular boy band member who they listened to a lot growing up came to their college for a tour. I'm trying to find it. Let me get the... um, Get the details. Came to college for a tour and kind of like was putting the moves on her and then texting inappropriate and whatnot and wanting to come backstage and all that jazz. And it turned out that he is married and he has three kids. So the toaster was asking like, what do I do? Should I message the wife? Like, what, what do I do? So we gave our best advice, but then we also tried to speculate about who it was. And... Our best guess was that it was Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys because he is married and has three kids. However, and so now people think maybe it was AJ McLean. He's married. He has three kids. He's a boy bander. They're on tour, etc. However, right. the ages and the timelines actually do not add up for it to be Backstreet oh. Boys because this girl who wrote in, I think she is 20, which would mean that you have to remember we're more than 20 a lot more than 20 she would not even have been alive really or maybe she'd been like screaming in the crib for when the Backstreet Boys had their peak people were guessing a lot of other bands that are not like from the Backstreet Boys in sync 90s era that are more contemporary like uh I forget what they were DMing and stuff I'll have what episode was it let me go to the episode because the comments give good band recommendations and I enough to convince me that it wasn't people the Backstreet was, I, Boys I thought I th- a lot of people agreed with me when they said it was Big Time Rush. Yes, they did. And I thought that was a good call. I thought that was a good call, too. Like, I really don't think it was someone from the Backstreet Boys. I think this is just coincidence. I think it is, too. Um, but, you know, you can't help but speculate. Yeah, because but I feel like, I mean, the statement gives nothing yeah the statement gives nothing and like why do you have to separate to work on your marriage if like something didn't happen but also like i don't know i i, I mean i want to respect their privacy we met aj mclean on the cma's red carpet and he was so nice a doll a doll was so nice turdy so okay wait, i think I they're it. just going through something okay this was her submission i found it finally growing up i always had this favorite what day band. did we do it march oh i don't know when did you don't know no Okay, growing up, I always had a favorite band. Their sixth concert I went to was near my university. When I ha- went to the concert, I had the opportunity to meet them. One of the members talked to me a lot, and we kind of hit it off, and he uh, asked to follow me on Instagram and then proceeded to DM me saying it was nice to meet me. The next morning, I looked at his Instagram, and to my surprise, I saw on his profile that he was married with three kids. Around a year later, he DM'd me and told me that he was going to be playing a concert near me again. He was just messaging me and practically begging me to come backstage before the concert. I went to the concert and talked to him. It was nice and chatty, but nothing I wouldn't have said if his wife was there. After the concert, I told him my friends... Uh, I told my friends that were at the concert with me were headed home. He responded with, if I came back with you, what's in it for me? I'm sure he's doing this with other girls. Uh, He meets during tour. Do I DM the wife? Yada, yada. He's trying to hook up with girls 10 plus year younger 
than him. She's 20. He's 45. Yeah. It's not him. It's not him. So we must respect their privacy at this time. No, but the only real thing is that they had three kids. They both have three kids. And that's not like a... A lot of people have three kids. And there were a yeah. lot of people in the comments who are offering other possibilities. Yeah, I definitely still feel confident in my big time rush because they're a little bit younger than Backstreet Boys. Yeah, there were other bands too that I didn't know. But apparently they do like college tours. Backstreet Boys don't do go to colleges. Not Yeah, not for a while. Like they maybe did that in the beginning of their career. But I think big time rush does. So I think everyone here is clear. I think so too. And now we can just talk about how sad it is that AJ McLean and his wife are separating. Yes, but I'm glad to hear that they're separating with the intention of getting back together. Like, I hope that that's true and that they can work through whatever rough patch they found themselves in. For the children. For the children, of course. Yeah. Agreed. So, uh, excuse me. They only have two kids. Oh. Why did everyone send this to me? Changes everything. Yeah. So it's definitely not him. Sorry to even mention it. (laughs) Literally. Sorry to smear, libel, and defame. AJ McLean this morning. Not cool of us. But we cleared his name. Name equals cleared. Mm -hmm. Cleared Clearedia. Clearedia! Are you ready for our next story? If it's the next story that's brought to you by Skylight Frames. It is Turdy Lulu Who. You know, Jax, on those long, lonely nights, I really miss you because you're not here anymore. And, you know, there's so many things I want to share with you, day-to-day life things that just, photos I want to show you of Theo. Of your outfits. But I have finally found something that makes it easy to help me and my loved ones stay connected. The Skylight Frame. Ever miss your loved ones when you aren't together? Do they miss you? Hopefully. Well, here's a gift that brings you all together, no no matter how far apart you live. The Skylight Frame. Skylight Frame is a touchscreen photo frame that your whole family can email photos to and they'll appear in seconds. You get to share your favorite moments with the people who matter most to you. It's a great gift for parents, grandparents, someone with a birthday coming up, someone who just had a baby, or even just for yourself. Anyone can send photos to the frame in just seconds via email or via their app. It's a great way to keep in touch with friends and family. It's super simple to use. The setup takes less than 60 seconds and even the least tech savvy person can use it. It looks like a real photo that adds a beautiful touch to your home. It holds thousands of photos that continuously rotate and bring daily joy. The Skylight Frame has a gorgeous touchscreen. It comes in two sizes, the original 10-inch and a new 15-inch gallery frame. You can swipe through photos with your finger, even tap it to heart the uh, photo and thank the person who sent it. So I get asked about like the what's the digital photo frame company that sponsors the toast all the time. It is Skylight Frames. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if you don't love your Skylight, they will issue you a full refund. Time goes fast. Staying in touch with those we love is more important than ever. And now the Skylight Frame makes it easy and fun. As a special offer for our listeners, get $15 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash toast. That's $15 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash toast. S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com slash toast. Thank you, Claudia. You're welcome, Jackie. Our next story, a little TV news. Why Lotus Season 3, some deets are emerging. One deet. It will be set in Thailand. The White Lotus is heading to Thailand. Multiple sources close to the production tell Variety. As the first two seasons of Mike White's The White Lotus were shot at Four Seasons Resorts in Hawaii and Italy, respectively, it's possible that season three will take place at one of the luxury hotels for properties in Thailand. That does make sense. HBO has Wait, declined. Say that again? So the, uh, White Lotus, Hawaii, and Italy were both shot at Four Seasons properties. Oh, Four Seasons, yeah. Yeah, but the hotel is called... The White Lotus. Um, so there are four four seasons in Thailand. Is Bali in Thailand? Yes, but there is not a four seasons there. No, no but Bali's like, in a country. Oh. Right? Oh, Indonesia. Indonesia yeah. is Bali. Sorry. I got my... Because like the nicest hotel in the world, like the one they say is like the nicest, is in Bali. But I got confused. Bali is in Indonesia. Well, geography queen. Totally. What's that? It's a Four Seasons? No, it's not a Four Seasons, but like it, if, if they were going to Bali, which I just got confused, I imagine they would try and shoot at what is great, like widely renowned as like the nicest hotel in, in, in the, the world. world. Is that where Rach was? Who's Rach? Rach Parcel. She was just on a... In, she was just in the Maldives. Oh, oh, oh. No, it's called... Um, I'll Google it. It's like... Bimmy, it's like a, it's, it's a four letter word that starts with B. Okay. 
17 best hotels in Hawaii. Maybe they're in alphabetical order. Nihi, N-I-H-I. That's the one? Yeah, it's like, I think it's regarded as like one of the nicest hotels on the globe. You should go. 100%. But I feel like, I mean, of course they need a gorgeous hotel and they will have a gorgeous hotel, but it's like, there's so many gorgeous hotels that they don't need to go to like the nicest one in the globe because it's yeah, about yeah, yeah. like the story. So that's exciting. I think that will be a great location. And then also rumored about season three, rumored casting news, yeah. extremely illegitimate. They were just spotted having dinner, uh, Mike White and Danny DeVito. So I am actually really excited about the potential of Danny DeVito because now that we don't have Jennifer Coolidge, the show really requires that kind of like, you know, really – um different out of the box sort of character that Jennifer Coolidge played and that Danny DeVito could definitely play I do have to say I'm like definitely like getting over White Lotus like I think with each season there's more intrigue and it see it feels like it's gotten worse like there was so much intrigue this season and like I get it but like was it good that's how season I felt one, about the first season, too. It was no, like season one was good, especially because we didn't know what the show was about. You know, yeah. We were just like strapped in for whatever journey we were going on. And then there was so much pressure that like I feel like no matter what season two was going to fall flat. But it didn't. People loved it. And people say season two is better than season one. Not you, I but other agree. people. Other people. Who the fuck says that? Everyone. Oh, I don't agree. But I think it's a great concept for a show. They could do yes. seasons forever, and they should do seasons forever. Um, apparently, like, season one was more focused on money, and season two was more focused on sex. Do you feel that way? Sex? They Why, because there were two prostitutes? Uh, this uh, White said in a clip, I, the first, I guess, the first yeah. season kind of highlighted money, and then the second season is sex. I think the third season would be maybe a satirical and funny look at death and Eastern religion and spirituality. It feels like it could be a rich tapestry to do another round at White Lotus. I guess, yeah, no, the first one really was about money, like Tanya and the investment, yeah. And then the other one But the one second really, one wasn't about money? Like, it's still... No, it was about rich people, but I guess, like, one of the major themes was sex and, like, how it makes people do crazy things. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like a thin theme. Yeah, especially you didn't even really realize that that's what they were up to. 100%. Although, you know, grief and, you know, Eastern culture does sound like an interesting... Yeah, especially around death thing. because yeah. there's always a death. Right, right. So... The stakes keep getting higher because the show keeps getting bigger and winning more awards. And what's so interesting about shows like White Lotus that just like put into perspective for me is like everyone watches it. Everyone loves it and everyone wants to be in it. And I just saw this clip because Kelty posted it. She interviewed Jennifer Aniston and Adam Sandler and she was like asking Jennifer Aniston if she would ever do White Lotus. She was like, I would die. Like I would love to. And it's like these are, you know people at that level who traditionally it's like you maybe start in tv but like the goal was always movies and doing tv was like kind of like tacky you know it was like it was definitely a step below and now with these like mini series that are so popular and so well done and are really just like very long movies at this point it's crazy how like you know silver screen is like not a thing anymore yeah, but I also think White Lotus holds a unique position because it's like, I don't know that you want to be on a TV show for eight seasons and like stuck right. doing television unless it's Game of Thrones. But right. White Lotus, it's like a one season wonder. Yeah. and But it's not a mini series because there could be seasons that go on forever. It kind of reminds me of True Detective where it's like, who's yeah. going to be the next detective? And it's really prestigious, but you only have to do it for like a year. You get to do the circuit and everything. It seems like a dream for an actor. Yeah, I guess... It's like a mini series, kind of, even though it's like a seasonal show. I don't know what the word is for a series right. that has a lot of seasons, but every season is Kumsa Fresh. Right. It's Tabula Rasa. Tabula Rasa, except for Jennifer Coolidge. But I also think that since Jennifer Coolidge won't be carried over to season three, they should carry someone over from season two to season three. A guest. Yeah. Yeah. Just to continue that thread. I think that's a nice thread. But like who was even well I would love to see Megan Fahey but yeah she's on to Ellen Hildebrand totally as previously reported on the toast totally but I do think Danny DeVito would be a great casting because he he 
he is similar to Jennifer Coolidge in the fact yeah. that he's so beloved. He's so iconic. Haven't seen him in a while. Would love to see him in again. And I imagine if I'm Mike White and like seeing how things played out for Jennifer Coolidge and I'm sure it wasn't even his intention to like give someone's Make career this star. resurgence and just like to choose people who are, are kind of their star is fading. No, and by the way like it, it was and is an ensemble cast. Like, Jennifer Coolidge wasn't in the first season more than anyone else. Like, yeah. there's a reason why, you know, her part was so different, but she just, people love her. Yeah. Yeah, so I think he will try and do that again, and he should do that again, because I think it's a, a wonderful thing to do. And the way that Mike White is Ned Schneebly is not lost on me. Right, and so it just makes you wonder when Jack Black will be <gasps> in a season. Oh my God, Jack Black in White Lotus is exactly what they need. Yeah. And Miranda Cosgrove. We're getting the band back together. And Joan Cusack. And Joan Cusack. Yeah. Huh. What do you think Joan Cusack's up to? I could tell you. Just, just living, I feel like she's probably like semi-retired. Uh, I'll tell you. She might I just can't be working remember. on some things. Right post-production some tings I feel like she's definitely not retired I feel like she hasn't been like spotted in a while I live for her like literally would take a bullet she I guess hasn't done something since 2020 but she's has something upcoming I, I think it's a short mm. like I said semi-retired yeah well I'm ready for a Joan comeback White Lotus season three White Lotus yeah are you ready for our fifth and final story, which is a little more TV news? Yeah. Because the trailer for the Kardashians dropped yesterday. Oh, and was it giving us nothing or what? It was probably giving us nothing, though it was trying really hard with some yeah. key pull quotes. So Kim Kardashian breaks down sobbing in the dramatic teaser for season three of Kardashians on Hulu. She looks toward the ground while using both her hands to cover her face and breathes heavily in the second long clip. Her sister, Chloe attempts to comfort her sister by rubbing the back of her head with her hand. The trailer teases that Kim will talk about several of the challenges she faced since filming resumed last fall. So she says in a confessional at the end of the teaser, so let's talk about it. It's well, unclear the, exactly it's unclear. what we shall be talking about. There are a couple things that she could talk about. Um, I think there's a lot that she won't talk about. What do we think she needs to talk about? Balenciaga. Balenciaga. Pete and her split, which I actually think she'll oh sh she'll share more. I think she'll share more about their split than she shared about their relationship. Because when you have a relationship, like you want to protect it and nurture it and like not bring in outside forces. But now that it's like dead and gone, like it's no, good fodder also, for the show. It's good fodder for the show. But also like there's so much that she needs to open up about. And I feel like she won't open up about. Like, she was very tight-lipped about Balenciaga. She's not going to talk about Kanye. So she has to bleed out in other things. And something irrelevant, like a breakup from now, what, over a year ago? Not, a, not a year. But, yeah, I agree. I think she will talk about that. I think she will talk about Balenciaga. I think she kind of has to. Well, there's the line from the trailer that makes me think maybe they do, where Kylie's like, you know, we have so much power and we have such a big voice. Is this what we want to use it for? I don't think it's about Balenciaga that I think it's just about well, like her like then doing a storyline about like giving back that it's a really powerful quote that she shared but I, I don't think it's like gonna be um oh part of a larger movement or something oh damn okay <laughs> that's just like how oh, I saw it I think she will talk about Balenciaga because like that is what people want to hear from her about she did part ways with them I think she kind of has to because that seems to be really the reason why the family's in the funk. Yeah. So why not? She won't talk about Kanye. Which I respect. I do. Me too. And um, sh I think she'll talk about Pete. I don't know what else is going on with her that she needs to talk about. Yeah. I don't know really. Like they've been so low key. So and, and I know the show is like delayed. So like we're going to see stuff from probably last year. But like that just feels so irrelevant now. And then they haven't really done anything in the last couple of months because they've been in this funk. I just don't feel like it's the right time. Like I, honestly I don't think we need a season right now. Oh I feel ready. I'm ready to be. I'm open. 
I'm open to what they have to share and what they have to say. Like, I feel like I, we've all been in a funk, a Kardashian funk. I, I want to get out of it. They are, at times in my life, like my favorite celebrities yeah, ever. Yeah. So I feel like I'm more interested to watch this season than I was even to watch last season when, like, all things were good, you know? Right. That's fair. Yeah. No, it's more interesting for sure. And they are sort of in this rut. So it'll be interesting to see what they think the issues are, what they need to speak about, and what they have to say. Like... I'm I'm like, are they going to acknowledge the rut? You know? The what? The rut? No, no. It's not that obvious to people who aren't you and I. Really? Yeah. Oh, I feel like it's like very obvious. No, it's not like there's people writing articles about it. There's not like viral threads on Twitter. Like, it's just me and you being like, it's not oh, great. Okay. Yeah. And I'm sure other people feel that way, but they don't recognize that they feel that way. It's not like a a, a national movement yeah. that they're in a rut. Oh, I totally thought it was. No, it's just us doing our thing. Uh, I'd rather see you out there doing that thing. Yeah, but nothing that they can't come back from, but they're going to have to no. give. They're going to have to like bleed out a little. Yeah. Which like, open up. Let's be real. Like, tell us what's going on. Yeah, I mean, they do, right? I know, but like they kind of do like... When it's like so late. And I know that's like just the nature of the show and they want to save it all for the show. But like, so if you're going to like bleed out and tell me all about Pete now, like I so don't care, you know? No, I'm, I don't care about Kim and Pete anymore. Like I've moved on, but I'm still open to hearing what happened. Like that was really so hot, then so cold. And like that to me is their personal life that they would be sharing that like I want to hear about. Yeah, me too. I wish we would have heard about it like the day a, of. Uh, but you got to give people this. No, is be- not the day of, not the day of. But like some sometimes, like so much has happened since then. Like he's literally dated like two other women, right? You know? Which is why, which crash. is why she can talk about it now, right? Right. You know, because it, feel, it feels dated. There's nothing for to protect. He clearly is moved on. Like trash yeah. him. Yeah, literally. You know. We'll just have to wait and see because honestly, the trailer gave little to nothing. No, the trailer was really easy to see through. Like, I, they really yeah. thought they did something. They pulled some strong quotes, but like, they, when, when you have watched their show for so long, you could see how it's also it's like it could so be true. about nothing. Smoke and mirrors. Yeah. How are yeah. we using our power? And then they like go and they do a day of service, which would be amazing. Right. right. But not what it what sounds like. Not what it sounds yeah. like. Totally. It's easy to see through. That's a, a very, very wet, wet, good way of saying it. But as stated, I'm open. I'm open too. Like, these are my girlies. I just need them to, like, you know, bounce back. But you know bit. what I'm not open to? A May 25th premiere date. Like, that is in two months. And I want my content now. Content with a K. Like, I don't want to wait two months on a measly trailer. Yeah. No, I'm sure we'll get, like, drops of stuff. But yeah. No, it's unacceptable. A month. I feel like you really shouldn't be allowed to promote anything more than a month. A out. month max. It's better for them too. I agree. Because I'm open now. I'm interested. But am I going to lose interest? I couldn't tell you. Right. Where will we be May 25th? You know? I don't know. I'm hoping to be at the Eras Tour. Right. Is that Memorial Day weekend? Yeah. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. So those are the fast five. Thanks, Jack. Great stories today. I enjoyed them. Well, you're welcome, turd. You're welcome, turd. That's so nice of you to say. Um, so that's our show. Tis. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for listening to the Toast the Millennium Morning Show where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and this video a thumbs up. We're also available as podcasts anywhere. Podcasts we've got Spotify, YouTube, Public Media, Everybody Cast, Fox, 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 Fox,